All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is the second installment of our weekly video blogs. Uh, again, we've uh, started this new communication platform as a way to uh, engage our members and just find a different way to inform you guys about uh, issues that impact your, your teaching, your daily work. Um, if you missed the first weeks, if you go on the U our YouTube page or even our Facebook page, it's, it's there as well. Uh, just search for Association of Role in Educators and you can find uh, week, week one's installment of our of our video blog. So here we are in the second week. I've, I've been able to visit many campuses so far and I am just continually impressed uh, by the energy and the hard work that you guys are able to bring every day, oftentimes in the face of extremely uh, challenging um, circumstances. So, so thank you for that. I know we're only two weeks down and we have a heck of a lot more to go, uh, but I am, I'm proud to, to, to be colleagues with, with all of you. Uh, so keep up the good work. Um, also, second week of school, it's, it's the beginning of football season. Have my you know, Gallus football shirt ready to go here for the game tonight. I have my rolling one. I'm going to head over to the rolling game during the second half. Both of our high schools are uh, kicking off the football season at home tonight. So I encourage you, if you can, uh, get out there and, and support our, uh, our uh, local uh, athletics. Um, all right, from a contractual point of view, into the second week of school, I know class size uh, is an extremely hot topic right now. First off, the district does have until the end of the first month of school uh, to correct class size problems. Uh, so as a reminder, we do have new uh, class size language at our elementary level. It's a 24 to 1 average in grades TK through 3. So that means uh, that the average amongst a grade span at a particular school site needs to average 24 to 1. You can go uh, up to 26 in a particular class. Or even if they pay the teacher $100 per student per semester, they can go over that 26. If it's, a last, it's like a last case scenario. But the average at that grade span still needs to be 24 to 1. At the upper grades, grades 4 through 6, uh, it is a 32 to 1 average with a max of 35. Um, I know at our high school level, for most of our classes, we have a 175 uh, uh, cap. Um, unfortunately, there is no limit on a particular uh, period how many students you can have. And I know I'm reading the survey data. We're talking with our site reps. We know that's a continued uh, concern to have per class caps. We continue to work on that, but just know it's it's an, a, a very difficult thing to accomplish at the bargaining table. Um, if it's important to us, we need to continue to organize uh, around that issue. And we'll, we, we will be back at the bargaining table uh, in January. Uh, the next thing when it comes to the contract is planning time. Our new contract grants us uh, now 100 minutes of planning time at the elementary level for our teachers. Uh, 50 minutes a week of that planning time is, is uh, being provided by our, the return of our music planning specialists. So that's fantastic news that we're bringing back our elementary music program. But I know as we're working out these schedules, uh, some of the travel time and, and getting from room to room uh, has become a little bit of an issue. So what we need to know is if you are missing out on your full 50 minutes of planning time, please talk with your site rep um, about this so, so we can get on this right away. Uh, you are entitled to a full 50 minutes of planning time. So if that's being cut short, because the music specialists are late due to their travel time or, or move situation, uh, we need to know about that. All right, moving into uh, some announcements on the political front. Uh, again, I'm going to talk to you again about Prop 55 and the passage of Prop 55. Uh, it is, uh, it'll be on the November ballot. Please encourage your friends and family to vote yes on 55. Uh, it is a continuation of the income tax revenue generated under Prop 30, which has allowed us to do things like bring back our elementary music program and some of the um, uh, healthy compensation uh, increases that we've been able to uh, see over the last few years. So again, continue to talk to your friends and family about Prop 55. Uh, the other issue on the political front is a district of choice. Uh, district of choice is, for those of you who've been around, know that it's a pretty hot topic, especially between Walnut Unified and Roland. In fact, there was a lawsuit a few years ago about that. <clears throat> district of choice allows uh, districts such as Walnut who have declared themselves a DOC or district of choice to take uh, up to 10% of our students from the Roland Unified School District. Uh, Walnut has reached that cap. They are not taking any more of our students and haven't in the last few years. But Senator Bob Huff has introduced legislation or introduced legislation uh, to lower that cap or to remove that cap, which would have allowed uh, Walnut to take even more of our students. Uh, looks like we have pushed back on that for this year, but I really need you guys paying attention over the next year because uh, we're probably going to have a big fight in our hands uh, uh, going into next year 
as uh, proponents of uh, district of choice are going to try to get this bill uh, reauthorized. So pay attention to that. Um, you know, just so you know, last year, 2015, uh, the Association of Rolling Educators won the Chapter in Politics Award for the California Teachers Association. <clears throat> so let's put our uh, put our award into action and, and get out there and talk to people about Prop 55 and, and begin to make yourself aware of uh, District of Choice and how that can impact us here in Rolling Unified. All right, looking at uh, the calendar coming up, I want you to mark a couple things, a couple opportunities that are coming up. On September 10th, our CTA Service Center 1 will be hosting our regional picnic. It is at San Dimas Canyon Regional Park from uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, that's September 10th. No RSVP needed. Just come, bring some lawn chairs, and have fun. There will be games. There will be food. It's definitely a family-friendly environment. Um, mainly the idea is just to have fun and connect to educators uh, from our region. So I really encourage you to uh, mark uh, September 10th on your calendar. And then on September 24th, uh, we are having our regional leadership conference uh, at Pomona Fairplex. So uh, that leadership conference is an annual event we put on that has some uh, basic trainings on uh, handling grievances and being a part of the union. We also have a legislative breakfast that takes place where local uh, assembly people and state senators come and speak. Um, but at lunch, we're going to have a guest speaker named Seth Bramble uh, and Patty Taylor, who are going to talk to us about student discipline and some of the new uh, legislation out there related to student discipline. So again, uh, just uh, thank you for the work that you all do on a daily basis. I know we're two weeks in, we have a lot more to go, but keep up the hard work and make sure you tune back in here next week for our uh, week three installment of our weekly video blogs. Have a great week. Take care.